I'm Nick Baldwin, co-founder of Lab Coat Agents. And I just want to, before, before our guys introduce, our, introduce themselves, we'll just give you a little, um, little background as to what this room's going to be about. Um, so you may have heard, I don't know how many months ago, it was probably six, seven months ago, Zillow purchased a company called Showing Time. And then right, right when that happened, the showing management space became the hottest topic in the industry. Like who would have thought, right? Well, it is because now people, agents, brokerages, MLSs, associations, they want other choices now, right? Like they don't really feel comfortable with Zillow having that information on their agents and not just their agents, on their clients. So the showing management software space has taken a big boom in the last six, seven months. And we're going to talk about Showingly, which is an awesome uh, platform. But I, I also want to just have a conversation around around the showing management space as a whole and and why now it's becoming such a hot topic other than the obvious and where you know you guys think that this is going, where it can go. Is it going to be totally automated? Are there still going to be human beings involved? That type of thing. So um, I want to introduce Jonathan and Andrew, the co-founders of Showingly. Uh, you guys want to unmute and say hello? Yeah, Jonathan definitely. Was looking, Jonathan was looking for that <laughs> microphone button. Where is that? I was. <laughs> I told you I didn't use Clubhouse in a while. Um <laughs> But yeah, definitely. I'm Jonathan Martinez. Uh, I'm CEO and uh, one of the co-founders of uh, Showingly. Um, and then I'll let Andrew introduce himself. And um, Andrew, if you want to give a background on um, really our real estate experience and kind of how we, uh, you know, we started this thing. Well, also let everyone know that you guys are also agents too. Well, I think the, yeah, we were agents and my name is Andrew, oh, okay. the president of Showingly. Yeah, we had a a team of about 30 real estate agents and before the team, John and I were individual agents. So almost started a brokerage actually instead of showing Lee. but ultimately we were in tech before that. So it was like, you know, do you, do you go into a, try to do a brokerage or I don't know. We, we really had this innovative entrepreneurial background from the Northeast actually in technology startups. And so it just, yeah, we, we decided we wanted to throw all of our weight behind showing me instead. And so uh, Denver, we're from Denver, maybe Westminster, north of Denver. That's where we did most of our real estate business back when we operated. But uh, yeah, excited to be here, Nick. Thank you. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Well, thanks for being here, guys. It's it's nice to know that you guys were agents up until, up until recently because you know there's too much tech in this business that too much tech in this industry created by people who have never sold a house and have never really been through the problem that they're attempting to solve. So I think that's a really important piece. So uh, why did you guys decide to jump into the showing management space? Did you guys see kind of a problem with it or, you know, what was the reason? Well, honestly, I think that the, <laughs> it, it's weird because, you know, you want to be very politically correct about this sometimes, but to be blunt, it was because showing time and CSS were just atrocious solutions. They just, I'm offended CSS by worked. that. I'm offended. Like it worked, right? If, if the You've bear, been if canceled, the standard Andrew. Of You've using, been canceled. <laughs> like if, if the standard of what you're using is just that it works, then you're not going to meet the 2020... 2021 and beyond future like where tech is going standard of it has to work but it has to work brilliantly and you know css worked because it wasn't very ambitious and then showing time worked and was pretty thorough but it was just such a nightmare to use and a pain and no one wanted to use it they just it was what was there to use right and that's why we use a lot of i mean that's why we use a lot of technology when there's not a lot of options in the space right i mean unfortunately we only have one mls typically to choose from and it's usually terrible and we have no ch no choice but to use it right yeah i think adding to kind of uh what you were talking about uh earlier nick and really just coming up with any solution and really any business uh i guess any business sector is a lot of the times specifically with real estate is you have really two types of like business owners and 
entrepreneurs that, that enter the space, either the, the real estate heavy um, con conceptual person, and then you have the other side of things where uh, maybe uh, the other entrepreneur, which is more tech oriented, more tech forward. And I think for, for myself and Andrew, I think having the experience in both um, was, was really, really pivotal and in setting the foundation for um, showingly and, and what we're doing here is, is obviously our core competency is showing management, but a lot of these solutions that are introduced into uh, real estate are solutions. And we got a lot of uh, hands-on um, experience with a lot of solutions, whether it be a CRM or, um, you know, a front end website for, uh, for inbound traffic, like you name it, like we used everything for our team. And so while we were going through that whole experience, um, contextually, we understood um, you know, what broker owners potentially want um, from a solution. And then also what agents want, because we were agents. Also, we we had, you know, 30 plus agents on our team. And we, we kind of understood the hiccups of, you know, of each of these solutions. And so um, we basically took a lot of that knowledge and and um, put it in the showing, like contextual knowledge. But then we had the tech background to also facilitate it in, in a way that's never been done before. Right. So, you know, what do you think... Where do you think that this plat? Where do you think that this tech or this space, right? Because it's not all tech. A lot of it is human powered. Where do you think this space is going? Like, what's been left out in the past that? Because a lot of a lot of stuff like this that's typically mostly human powered up until a certain point. You know, there's only so much that happens with it, right? Like it doesn't evolve as much. So where do you see this space evolving in the next, you know, five to 10 years? I think one big thing that most people do when they try to build a real estate technology is they make it very niche, very one dimensional, because that's what traditional business knowledge would tell you. But if you look at the real estate industry for the agents as well, or primarily for agents, there's a lot of duplicate data and duplicate efforts that get caused by having to manage half a dozen different solutions to manage your business. And so having to log into all of these different things, add your clients to all of these different things, it's a mess. It's hard to communicate to your clients. And so what we're looking at is the future being one platform to sign in and being, uh, be able to really manage all of the things you do on a daily basis, be it connect with clients, connect with each other, connect with your brokerage, manage your transaction, your showings, your home searches, your drips. I mean, just to bring all of that into one place to simplify it for agents. That's what we are doing here at Showingly. That's why we call ourselves a real estate platform, not a showing management company, even though showing management's the you know, the hot topic and what we primarily do on the platform. But that's where we see it going is, I mean, what else is there to do? People are just reinventing the wheel when it comes to agent technology. No one's really doing anything different. But what we're wanting to do is bring that into one place. Okay, so the essentially what you're saying is the the disconnectedness, for lack of a better term, the disconnectedness of the existing platforms, right? Like, the consumer, it's all about making the experience the best it could possibly be for the consumer. So before it was only agent centric and now we have to evolve into consumer centric as well. Uh, so, you know, what is that typically, what, what does that look like um, for what you guys are doing and where do you, where do you think it's going to go? Yeah, I think, I think just, just kind of, I guess, in a nutshell, presenting a united front to the consumer and the only way that you can do that as an agent or really the industry is beginning to, to unify the solutions. Um, like Andrew was saying, removing duplicate entry for agents and brokerages um, so they can provide a deeper value proposition for their consumer. Um, that's why a lot of these, you know, the consumers are on a lot of these home search websites that are really shallow value propositions to the consumer but it's the it's really the the easiest way for the consumer to do home search and do some of these other things. Um, but what happens when you actually connect that with with an agent in a very meaningful way or with the the, the industry on the back end? That and I think that's that's really where we're going. And I think um, you know, kind of whoever does it first is is really going to be the one that that really wins and actually is the household name, like you know, the Zillow or Realtor.com and those guys. For sure, for sure. So um, with 
the acquisition of Showing Time by Zillow, where do you guys foresee them using that platform? Or did they get it simply for the data or whatever technology? Because as far as I know, Showing Time is essentially primarily a call center, right? So what do you think the, the, the mindset or the thought process behind that was? Um, and why are agents and, and MLS is kind of looking for other options at this point? Wow. Well, I think speculating as to Zillow's intents is, I mean, you could go one of a few ways. It'd be really easy or almost too obvious to say maybe the they want the consumers to be able to schedule without an agent, that kind of thing. But honestly, when you look at a company like that buying a company like Showing Time, and you look at the data that Showing Time generates, and then you look at the data that Zillow and all of Zillow's companies generate, my personal opinion is that, or my prediction maybe, is that the data is too incompatible and too hard to sanitize and unify. And I think that's what a lot of companies do is they buy one-dimensional solutions and try and stitch them together. And it's really hard to do on a data level. And so it's, you know, maybe they want to do that, but that will take a lot of time. I think sure. you don't see it happen quickly, if, if at all. But <clears throat> I, I don't know. I think their intentions aside, it's just another piece of the puzzle for them. Yeah. So, all right, let's talk about then, you know, kind of the intent behind, you know, making bringing the consumer much closer to, uh, you know, this experience. So for instance, you know, a, a consumer can go on realtor.com or Zillow, they can click request to see a home an agent will call them and schedule the appointment, right? What is different, um, in terms of, you know, what's showingly or, or what, or where the future of this is going, where it can be less antiquated, you know, how does, let's use showingly obviously as an example, because as we're talking about, how does the process work? Okay. The consumer's on the platform and it's an app that the, that the agent also has that's branded. And then everything that goes through the app that the consumer does, um, the agent is kept in the loop. Is that kind of how it works? Or do you guys want to explain the process there? Yeah. Um, so I think for us, um, we want it to be a very agent centric uh, platform and really driving deep value, even on upstream for the consumer and, that all starts with giving the consumer a great, uh, really home search experience, but then driving that deeper connectivity to their agent. And so what agents are able to do on our platform is not only are they able to get on and um, schedule showings and, and include their, their buyers in that, or if they're a listing agent, include their sellers in, in that whole approval and denial process of, of different showing appointments. But what they're also able to do is um, say your client is, hey, he's in my CRM or my database, but I want to keep tabs on him. He's going to start his home search six months before. Um, so what I'll do is I'll connect with him in the Showingly ecosystem and he'll have his, his app and he'll, he'll be looking at homes and favoriting homes and maybe putting notes on, on certain things um, and really keeping that, that live stream. So I'm, I'm getting updated as the agent whenever my buyer is doing something in, in the other application. And um, obviously, you know, and that's auto logged inside inside an agency, inside an agent CRM, and just driving that 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 greater connectivity. Also, when you connect with a client, if I connect with a specific client, um, no other agent can get on the application and connect with another client, connect with my client. Um, it's a unique one to one connection. Um, really, really trying to have agents retain their business. Um, so also as a, as a client retain, uh, retention mechanism as well. Got it. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Um, so, so basically, the agent now is in control of the the agent is in control of scheduling the showings, which is obviously is something that they are typically in control of. But at the same time, the consumer can see when and if the if the agent is scheduling those homes, and then they can see, you know, if they're granted access and when they're going to see them and things of that nature. So it's kind of like, is a schedule kind of created that both can look at? Yeah, there's, there's a schedule, like shared schedule aspect to that for sure. I think one big difference too is with Zillow or Realtor or Redfin or any of these sites that are trying to give the consumer like maybe a convenience play or some kind of value. It's working right now because 
it's such a complicated thing to understand for a home buyer. Right now, it's because agents use so many different real estate products that like consumers don't really have one that they know that agents use that they should use. And so our goal with this is to present more simplicity to the consumer because if we keep doing it the way we're doing it, you could tell them to use your app or your website or whatever it is you're telling your home buyers to use, but they're just going to end up using that shiny object, shallow value proposition, most convenient home search site they can find, which is usually Zillow, sometimes Realtor or Redfin. And the difference is on our platform, they can always connect to their agent. We don't sell leads back to agents. We don't do any of that, that BS. You know, I mean, we keep the agents uh, honored through the process, really, is the, the main difference. You guys have something within within your app that I actually love that a lot of well that I've never seen really before in this type of in this type of platform. Can you explain the social aspect to it cuz that's actually one of my favorite features. Yeah, I think the the easiest way to describe what we do on the agent app is we connect agents to their business to their consumers and clients, to their brokerage, and to each other. And the to each other part has to have some kind of social foundation. And the easiest way to do that is through really traditional social media structure. So we let agents follow and unfollow each other. Uh, We have private account architecture as well. And then what this does is, for example, there's certain things that require a, a connection between agents. For example, like being an admin. So if you want another agent to be able to act as an admin or a TC on your behalf, the easiest way to do that is through our social architecture. If you go to that agent, you could give them the permission to do that for you. Or if you want to do showing delegation and hire showing assistance, for example, you could go to that agent and put them as an acceptable showing assistant whenever you delegate a showing. So things of that nature. And then ultimately, when we introduce teams through the platform, being able to connect with agents in that way and have that base layer of social connection enables a feature like Teams really easily too. Yeah, let's talk about the showing delegation because the showing assistant or the showing agent, you know, that's a very intricate part to a lot of big teams, right? And so sometimes with agents who aren't on Teams, uh, you know, they, they, they burn the candle at both ends because they're trying to accommodate every single showing and you know, they're, they're out all day, back to back to back from one client to another client. And so through the app, it allows you to essentially do an Uber type feature where you can put out there into the Showingly ecosystem that you have a buyer who wants to see a house and then let who, whatever agent wants to pick that up and show them the property how much you're going to charge them. Now, just so you guys know, like you can delegate to whoever you want, right? You could have kind of like a network of agents that you trust to show a home uh, for you. Right. But it's a very, it's a, it's a really cool leverage tool. Uh, If you know, you're a solo agent and you don't have the bandwidth, you know, we can't be two places at once. So this is a great way to kind of, get multiple clients out there at the same time when before you just go back to back to back and before you know it you're just not at your best by the end of the day you're burnt out right so that's essentially kind of what you guys have done yeah john feel free to chime in on that one if you want but that's that's really in a nutshell you can't be in two or three or ten places at once unless you're delegating you know well also that you guys should know anyone listening the the who whichever agent claims the showing like if you put something out there and you say hey i need someone to show this house at this time it's going to cost 40 dollars. the agent that claims the showing doesn't get the contact information of the client they just get the time and the place to meet the client um and you just let your client know that you know jonathan's going to be meeting you to show you the home and when you're done i'll follow up with you that's essentially you know, what a showing assistant is if you have a big team. 
you know, listen, you know, Jonathan's going to show you these properties. And when you're done, um, I'm going to follow up with you and, and, and get your feedback. Uh, and so setting that expectation um, from the beginning is key. But this is just a really great opportunity for agents who just don't have the man or woman power to help them um, get out there and show, show more homes. I mean, the more homes you show to more people, the more money you're going to make. So, so many solo agents are just kind of, you know, tied to this, just themselves, you know, they don't have the leverage. So that's, I love that you created that, uh, that feature, which is pretty sweet. Um, Hey, what else should we know? Because it's such like a vast, I think that there, like any, I think like obviously with any technology, um, you know, you guys can really create, you can take this wherever you want to go. I uh, Actually, that just made me think of a question. This is actually a real technology platform, right? So do you have a call center or no, is it strictly through the the platform? <clears throat> no, yeah. So we, we have a call center. Um, so we have reps that um, really in a, in a 12 hour window every single day, um, seven days a week um, are able to, to fill calls for various things. Um, realistically, I, I think really in practicality, the way the app's been working and the way agents have been using it, there hasn't been a ton of call to schedule or really just a ton of calls in, um, really just for support. Um, so our guys are, you know, sitting kind of idle uh, a lot of the time, but I mean, that's just kind of uh, kind of a testament to building a great user interface for agents and making it really intuitive and easy to use. And so, um, yeah, so yeah, we, for short answer would be, yeah, we do have a call center here. Awesome. 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 That, I love that. I love that. Anyone in the audience have a question? Because, you know, I think this is like, a, this is going to be the, if, if, if it's already not the next big thing, it's definitely going to be one of the, um, you know, the big conversations uh, right now and in the future. I'm seeing uh, several other uh, companies that are attempting to do this as well. Um, you guys, ha now, if an agent wants to kind of use a system like this, do they have to get it through their association or can it be through their brokerage or how does it look if they want to sign up and, and start using this? They want to get rid of the stuff they're already using and test this out. Yeah, so um, typically when whenever we, we enter a market, uh, we'll go to an MLS and really it's the data that we receive from the MLS. So we get the full IDX feed. Um, so really having every single property um, on the platform for that particular market. And that's kind of, you know, ground zero for us to then begin um, to operate in that market. And so um, we've had a lot of, you know, a lot of users from, from all over the nation, a lot of agents from all over the nation introduce us to their MLS. Um, there's so many of them and, um, and really made that intro, that warm intro, which tends to help. So if you want us to, uh, to operate in your market, um, definitely reach out to our support team. Um, and, and then figure out a way, we'll figure out a way to, to connect with your MLS. You know, I was looking through the website and there's something I want to talk about as well, that you have seller tools as well, not just buyer tools. And one of the biggest pain points as a listing agent is just really keeping a running record or track of, you know, who is, uh, seeing your home, what time they're seeing your home, what they're saying about your home. So the seller tools, uh, they kind of give transparency to that, right? Yeah. So the seller tools, um, that's, you know, basic showing management is having the showing history and inside showing history. Uh, we aggregate feedback in a star rating system, similar to um, the way the convenience like Uber, Lyft, uh, DoorDash, those guys aggregate feedback. Um, but we also leave an optional uh, summary field for buyers agents to leave feedback as well. And then attached in, inside their feedback and, and on that showing appointment and the showing history, um, you can call, text, or email that agent directly from, from that screen. So making it really, really easy for, for the agent to get in contact with any specific buyer agent, um, but also great for your sellers to see who's entered their home. If they denied any showings or any showings were canceled, they can see that. Um, all in real time. So really, really neat stuff for the seller. Yeah, that's awesome. Because listen, you know, one of the things that slows us down is cons consistently, you know, the seller, either the seller getting the text messages and clicking, yes, they can come see the house or the agent 
in, uh, intercepting the messages and then calling the seller and then calling back the buyer agent. Like this way, like there are certain things that an agent really doesn't need to contact the seller about, right? And I think one of them just should be when people want to see your house, you know, I'm, you know, we didn't get into this business to, you know, be appointment setters. Um, and I know a lot of agents, well, I just know a lot of agents want to, uh, you know, they want to intercept every showing and then they want to call their seller. Then they want to call the, uh, the, the buyer agent back now in this market where, where it's crazy houses in some markets. I just read an article. Some houses are selling for a million dollars over asking. Like I, you know, there's houses in, in my New Jersey market that are getting 50, 60 offers. I mean, scheduling wow. all of those appointments can be a night. And so if the, if the seller has one place to see where this schedule is, that's not something that the agent consistently needs to call or contact them about. Would you agree or what do you think? Yeah. So the, uh, the listing agent, when they go through the connect listing flow is what we call it, but it's really just them just configuring their listing, um, with showingly so they can, all the showing management um, services is, is hosted in showingly. Um, when, when they're able to configure that, they can actually configure different things that they want their, their sellers to be involved in, you know, what the listing agent doesn't want to be involved in. And a lot of that is that approval and denying, um, you know, those showing requests. And so a lot of agents, um, you know, actually just, hey, I just want my seller to, to approve everything. It'll go to their app. They'll also get a text and even an email if the, the listing agent wants them to, to have those other means of, of notification and approving and denying. So, um, yeah, I totally agree. So. The agents that, you know, want to intercept everything, they can totally still do that. But the agents that want to be more hands off with the appointment setting and all those things, uh, that's, you know, the rest of us. Yeah. Hey, anybody have any specific questions about this type of technology, how it could work in your market, how you would, you know, um, how you would present it to uh, a buyer? You know, I love that there's a branded app there and it's connected to the MLS. Everything is in real time. Every listing that hits the market in your MLS pops up. Um, and it's a great way for communication to be more transparent. You know, if anything, that's, you know, that's one of the things that's really missing uh, from the, from the, from the actual experience is the, is the communication. And a lot of times it's not even, a lot of times, like I said, it's the it's the agent just burning them, burning the candle at both ends, and just not having the time to communicate. And so, you know, leveraging technology to help you to help you relate certain certain aspects of your business is super important. Um, and listen, a seller or a buyer doesn't really care how their how information gets to them as long as it gets to them. Uh, and so if you can figure out a way to get it to them by automating it or putting it through an app or a push notification on your phone, that's fine. Like a seller or a buyer doesn't want to talk to you at 11 o'clock at night. The only reason they're going to call you at 11 o'clock at night is because they haven't gotten questions answered throughout the day. So if you're able to automate any of that or let that kind of flow through technology, they're going to, they're going to equate it to you and how well you communicated, even though it was automated, you know, that's kind of how I look at it. What do you guys think? What do you guys think? Yeah, I think, uh, Thomas raised his hand. I'm trying to add him up. Oh, he did. Oh, he there he is. Hey, Nick, how are you, man? Hey man, Thomas, what's up? What's your question? Uh, yeah, just quick question. I guess, uh, as the industry kind of transitions into the digital age here, um, if I'm a, I'm an agent, uh, I'm not concerned that showing time is now middlemanning me. Uh, not sorry, not middlemanning, but that middle person and taking all of that data to all these showings. If I'm a homeowner and I see what Zillow is doing with these estimates, um, and I say, hey, you know, this is going to be twenty-five thousand dollars, and I'm answering all these calls for these showings, and you know, this is show I have people just knocking on the door via using this this you know technology. What am I going to pay that twenty thousand dollars to this agent for? Um, you know, Zillow can't just step in with their broker's license and continue to do the same, and and they're also you know, syndicated to IDX from the MLS, um, getting that data or, you know, you saw exactly what happened with the, um, you know, co-star and, and so forth. And you guys want to, you want to jump in on yeah, that? Yeah. Um, 
I th- I think that's a great point too, Thomas. Like if if anything, what it's starting to do is diminish the amount of value that maybe that agent is adding systemically. If that's maybe what you're exactly. getting at, hundred percent. Yeah, and I, I think if if in the lack of a presence of value, it, it's like how over time can you justify prices? I mean, over time the with diminishing value, then yeah, I mean the the price of the agent's commission will go down if that's what happens. And just as an economic commodity, if there's less value, then the price will be less, you know. And I think you can only justify perceived value for so long. So if, if for example, they do systemically diminish the value that an agent's providing, that agent might be an expert in the field, but you know. If, yeah, systemically providing less, they're going to get less commission. So that's a very good point. Yeah, I think, you know, especially with showing property, you know, that's in the eyes of the consumer when they go to a site like Zillow or Realtor. That's kind of how they're thinking of us, right, as door openers. Um, And with something like this, there's more of an experience involved. And I think it could definitely elevate our, um, you know, definitely elevate uh, our value in that sense. You know, just because of the experience that the platform is going to give somebody, that can definitely, that will just automatically make them think so much more highly of us. Do you know what I mean? Does that make sense? I mean, uh, of course, if you're, you're going to bring value in other ways, and the, but again, as the technology moves forward, the the comps are you know being done by by tech companies, and you know, like you had said, where are you going to add that value if now this homeowner is is getting 30 phone calls a day or 30 notifications about I've got people pounding on the door to come in here. What am I what am I doing for this? You know, to pay this agent, what's he doing for me? And I think as the you know the middle tier market is going to feel that a whole lot more than the luxury market. Um, but again, somebody who is selling their four hundred thousand dollar house, five hundred thousand dollar house in Middle America, um, is certainly going to want to save that fifteen or twenty thousand um, dollars, especially if there's a um, a buyer's agent working with them, so they still have that guidance. Um, so now, if you're competing with Zillow and you're a you're a local real estate agent, um, and that homeowner says, "Okay, well, I think you're only worth one and a half percent commission." Um, do you say to this person, okay, well now you're going to deal with showing time and all of those showings, and that's I'm I'm okay with that if you're going to let all of these people in and out of the house, and you know I'm not an appointment setter and I'm just there to do the contracts or whatever that may be. I guess you know kind of what's your view on that, Nick? Yeah, I mean, I I think that anyone who's going to ask you for, ask you for part of your commission or ask you to reduce your commission, that person. Well, there's a couple, there's one, there's two reasons, why, but there's only really, I'm sorry, there's only one reason why that would happen. The reason why that would happen is after your consult, whether it be buyer or seller, the only reason someone's going to ask you to, to, to charge them less or to give them money at, back from your commission is if you didn't present the value to them. If they ask you right off the bat, I usually say, listen, it sounds like commission is really important to you and we're definitely going to get to that. I want to show you what I'm going to offer you as your agent when I represent you. And then definitely at the end when I'm done, we're going to 100% talk about what, what it's going to cost. Um, and so, if, and it's just really an objection handler, you know, and, and people will bring it up if they don't see the value in what you presented them. Either that or they're just, or they're just morons, you know. <laughs> I guess not so much right now is what I'm saying. I'm saying as we progress into this digital age, like you said, you see the future of showing time, of showing time, showingly, um, is is getting these people in and out of the door. Um, now, if if Zillow is now hiring agents and putting them on a salary of seventy thousand dollars a year, maybe some sales bonuses, um, and because they want to take the the broker's side of it. Again, I'm not saying right now. I'm saying as it progresses, I think that's going to way the future is going to. So we've go. so so Thomas, that's a good point. We've seen that model come and go many many times. We've seen it with Foxtons, which was probably about a decade ago. We saw it with Purple Bricks. Uh, we see it with Redfin. We see that model coming and going, and then we also see that model really not growing, right? Like 
I don't see Redfin expanding at the rate at which they thought it would. And those two other companies that I mentioned um, went under just as quickly as they came over here. I mean, remember the push for purple bricks? They're huge in the UK. And that's only because the UK has a much different way of doing real estate than the United States. So it works there. But if you're paid a salary, then there's no motivation to get the best possible price for the seller that you're representing. And we know that, but those salary based companies, they just don't last. Now there's always going to be somebody who wants the McRib over the filet mignon. There's always going to be someone who wants the filet over the McRib. There's always going to be someone that, you know, there's always gonna be a market for both. Um, and I honestly feel that we're just going to start weeding out, um, we're just going to start weeding out the the McRibs a lot a lot quicker. I think this market specifically um, is getting very difficult for a lot of agents. Agents are either having their best year ever or their worst year. I'm not really seeing too much of anything in the middle. Um, but I think that, yeah, the salaried structure or the 1%, those don't ever, those have not in the past taken off the way... Uh, I, I guess I just see. Seen it. I guess I just see it as the you know post pandemic. The way business is done in the real estate world is different. The technology is much more improved. I'd be really interested to hear Jonathan Andrews' take on um, um, you know what they just think about the idea of it. Yeah, I think that you know again, it's easy or it's harder to think about this in terms of this year, next year. If you go twenty, thirty years out, and you ask where is real estate, both in terms of technology and the agent's position in the industry going to be, I think it could go one of two ways, right? Because, I mean, say companies like Zillow won and they're, what they're trying to accomplish happened and you kind of marginalize the agent, what does that world look like? And then you say, well, hey, long term, should we preserve you know, higher commissions and how the agent is operating in the process? What does that look like? If you look at those two scenarios, the only way that you could achieve the scenario where the agent is still prominent is if you find a way to actually increase the value of time that the agent is giving to the consumer. Because right now, as an agent, you might be spending 80% of your time prospecting. And that 80% of human resource time is not necessarily going to providing a valuable service to the consumer. I think if you use technology in a way that maximizes the actual value you're giving to people, and really, I guess it just comes down to the technology then. I think that for us and what we're looking at with Showingly, we want to be a reflection of what's happening in the real estate transaction. And right now, if you as an agent going through the real estate transaction on showingly with your consumer were to be able to do from front to back in one place with the consumer, they would have no problem with the value you provided. But right now, you know, you tell them to go to this app and that app and this app, you have an app for contracts and app for showings and app for all of these different things. It's just confusing and cluttered and they're going to start to go where it's simple and, look at companies like Zillow and I, I don't know. I, I think it goes one of two ways though. So John, if you want to chime in. Yeah, I definitely think, I mean, with technology, I think technology should um, increase, uh, really increase the, the consumer and their experience. But unfortunately there hasn't been a lot of um, attention placed there. Um, because a lot of real estate agents, whether you're new or, you know, you've been in the business for a while, um, agents are focusing on really kind of keeping their ship running as far as, you know, what's going on in, in the background. And that's really not showing to the consumer. Um, and I think that's where a lot of agents and really technologies coming out are really focusing on, on really driving, you know, value for these various verticals, but really where the value is, is unifying the entire process for the agent. That way the agent can focus on deepening deepening their value proposition to the consumer and um i just think i mean you talk to you know we know a ton of agents here in denver 
a lot of the times um, they're not realizing, you know, basically what Andrew said was um, majority of their time is prospecting and more of the sales when sales is really not adding any value, really any tangible value to society um, or really to the end consumer. Um, <clears throat> so, yeah, I, I guess in short, I agree with Andrew. Great. Thank you, guys. Awesome. Thanks, Thomas. Appreciate it, man. Um, hey, if anyone have any other, anyone have any comments, questions, or, or, or concerns? I know that there might, there's probably concerns because we're real estate agents. We, we, we have a lot of concerns. So, <laughs> just, you know, there's got to be, there's got to be someone with, uh, with a concern. Um, so, Jonathan and Andrew, um, you know, uh, just kind of tell us a little bit more about, you know, what, what, how, how, why this platform kind of is important and, you know, essentially like what is the main differentiating factor between this and kind of whatever else is out there? Yeah, I think again, the reality right now for anyone trying to run a real estate business is systems and processes make or break your company and systems and processes are really hard when you have to manage half a dozen different solutions when often there's duplicate data, there's duplicate efforts, there's a lot of confusion in running your home buyers and sellers when you have to tell them to do a whole bunch of different things in different places. And so for us, bringing that day-to-day into one platform and then ultimately being able to reflect that over to the end user on you know, seller or buyer and letting them have that simplicity would be the vision for us and you know, we're well on our way to that. I think why you'd use us right now is because we've done a lot of that already. And I think it just simplifies everything and makes life easier in having one platform. Yeah, I think I think to really what Andrew said at the end of that is we're, you know, we're doing that already. It's funny it's when the news kind of broke um, about the whole acquisition thing. Um, you know, it's kind of like a week later, everyone and their, their grandma had a had a showing management company, right? <laughs> and we saw all these companies pop up and, and it's so funny because we, we, you know, we're showing that we've, you know, that's our core competency is showing management and we've been doing this and we were here. We were the only alternative ready to go, even at scale, um, when, the, when the news broke. And so, you know, you, you know some of our, our other competitors, you know, without saying names, um, you know, they, they have their, their, their twists on showing management the way it should be. Um, but what we know as Showingly is showing management is a very nuanced uh, scheduling and logistical uh, thing that, you know, we as agents use. Um, and so for us, it's, uh, you know, our competitors, they're, they're not as far along in the showing management side of things um, and figuring out, hey, all the different corner cases and use cases and really how quirky, you know, the agents can be when they're using some of the software. And we've already done that, um, you know, and so what we're doing is, you know, we have the, you know, the base layer showing management, but we're adding things that have never been done before and making it easy to use for the agent um, to where our competitors, I mean, some of them have launched, some of them haven't. Um, but in general, like, you know, showing management, we're, we're just continuing to add and make it easy and valuable for the, for the agent. But um, also we're doing a lot of other things, neat things for the agent and for, you know, brokerages. And that's really, that's, you know, what, what sets us apart from kind of the other guys. Yeah, hundred percent. Um, hey, so one thing we didn't ask you was what, what's the cost? Yeah, I think what most people find crazy is that our showing management we offer for free right now. It's it's not actually a huge burden to offer showing management like you would think. It's uh <laughs> Uh, honestly, I think that's where the industry is going too. I mean, you look at all these different showing management mm-hmm. competitors now, they're all driving down the cost. So, um, like if tomorrow, for example, Zillow was like, eh, we'll offer showing time for free. Like we're happy with that because that's what we do, you know? Right. Um, it's just such a, it's almost like if you go to a technology platform, usually there's something you can do for free. And then there's ways, you know, they'll make money, but yeah, yeah so totally. there's like the upgrades and stuff. Yeah. 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 That's for sure. For sure. Awesome. Well, Hey, where do people go if they want to learn about showingly? Showingly.com. 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 Or what? 
Social media, maybe. Social media, you can message Jonathan and Andrew if you click through to their profiles. You can, uh, do you guys have your, oh yeah, you have your Instagrams in there. You guys can go and message them or tweet them or go to showingly.com and ask for a demo. Um, and you guys are in how many markets now? I think I want to say with the addition of MLS pin, that'll cover another five markets. Austin will be six. So we're going to add actually almost nine in the coming couple of weeks. Right now we're in Denver, uh, Miami and Arizona. Austin. That's huge, man. Congratulations on that. Thank you. Awesome guys. Go to showingly.com. Click through to Jonathan and Andrew, follow them, check out, go to their Instagram, shoot them a message. If you have any further questions or you want to get more info on Showingly, you want to bring it to your brokerage or your or your MLS, definitely do that. And you know you'll see these guys on Lab Code Agents, you know every every couple weeks or so, just kind of talking about this with us. Um, it's a platform that you know we really believe in, and uh, we want to bring it to your guys' attention because everything is changing and evolving in every aspect of real estate. You got to stay in the forefront. So cool, guys. We'll appreciate it. Thanks for being on with us and uh, we'll see you. Uh, we'll see you. We'll see you next time. I don't even know how to, I don't even know how to end a room. Here we go. Okay. <laughs> All right. Cool guys. Thanks so much. Yeah. Thank right. you. See you guys later.